I don't think I seen that coming, man. I, when I started fishing, it was just like fishing. I'm fishing with Johnny McCombs, I'm fishing with my dad, we go fish a wildcat, or we went 300 bucks and we're driving home. And I'm like, man, we won money. He said, yeah, we won money. I'm like, so we can do this again next week. And he was yeah, like, ha, I'm fishing, I'm fishing. I didn't really understand. I didn't really understand the Elite Series. That was the top 100. I didn't, I didn't have a chance to read all the magazines because we worked all the time. I didn't have cable TV. I was in my 20s, so I'd never seen the show. Like, I didn't know. I just knew this fool done gave me $300 for catching 13 pounds at Smith Lake and a Tuesday night, and I said, <laughs> we gonna get rich because we gonna fish, you know, so. How do you want to be remembered? As a good guy, when it's all said and done, I don't care if the bass fishing Hall of Fame ever looks at me. I want to be remembered as the guy who just tried to do the right thing. Come on, give it up for this guy right here, your angler of the year, Gerald Swindle. Get loud for your 2016 Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. The G-Man gets it done and finishes in spot number one. I think the whole start was my father just taking me fishing and me watching him catch a few fish and me catching some as a little kid. And I'm thinking, man, this is awesome. I just never knew it was gonna go from aluminum boat to a glass boat to a career. I just knew early on in my life, I loved the, the whole concept of fishing. And I just remember some of my childhood memories is just watching dad catch him and me catching a few and then fishing with him thinking this may be the greatest thing in the world. Actually, uh, one of the first things that let me know that this is where, I knew it's, I kind of was headed in that direction, but I didn't have a game plan. Like I just kept fishing and, and I was winning at a, at a level where I'm like, okay, I don't have to work all the time. But I tried to, I was qualifying for the top 100, fishing the opens, and I got invited to fish the FLW, first ever FLW event on Beaver Lake, the $150,000. I went up and I won it. And I knew driving home that if, I think I can make this. You know, I knew I had the money then to try to sustain the road and do what I had to do. But it was like in 98, and that same year, I made my first Bassmasters Classic. So like, everything started clicking. You know, you win the, you win the, at that time was one of the largest paying cash events we had in the country. And then all of a sudden, I'm in the, I'm in the arena at High Rock, and I'm thinking, this is as good as it gets. And I don't think I've ever lost that, that focus on wanting to get back there. And it was just, it was hooked right then. I'm going to do this somehow. No, no marketing plan, no skills, barely graduated high school. And I'm like, this is my road in life and I'm going to drive down. Got him. That's a good one too. That is a big and a bit of bass. Look at this, huh? Look at this. <laughs> I want you to look at the size of this big jump right here, son. Come on. What's your practice for? You see what just happened right here? We up here just, we actually up here building a piece for Phoenix and the bass, the, the website. So we're out talking about me being on Gunnersville, me being able to come to Gunnersville and fish. And you know, it's September, so we're not really catching a lot. I'm not really that motivated. I got stuff laying everywhere. I'm like, hey guys, let's go. Let's go up in the creek. And I just lost another one. And this is why I do this stuff, because I'm very bored back there. Nothing is happening. I get to a place, I say, I've never been here. Let's go on an adventure. And I pull in and I'm analyzing what's in front of me. Creek drain in. Me and Tristan's laughing. This is gin clear. This must be where the spring is. I lose one. I throw back out and I get about a six on right here to the boat. I lose him. I throw back out and get another bite. That's why I say I want to go fishing when I get home. Because that keeps your mind sharp. That's what takes you to the next level in the elites. I may not get all the blue trophies. I'm just trying to get the checks and the highlight reel sometimes. You're just trying to get in the paycheck line, and that's why I do it. Because it's the small things that I notice that when you start making it happen, that confidence builds where you're like, yep, that's the place to be. Boys, that was a grown one. Might have rushed him. Grass dude. He's a puller too. That's 
Why you do it, folks? That's another big one, y'all. So what did I learn today? I come all the way up here to the lake, and I'm just playing. But now I have learned something. Y'all got to check it out. It's Gerald Swindle behind the scenes, living at home, doing it wrong or doing it right. Boys, I want to do it all night. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you whistle like that, but that ain't anybody out there. I think that's it. I think that's what I've really looked at in my life in the last six or eight years that with with my wife and her by my side and her talking to me sometimes she said have you ever thought that fishing chose you for a reason besides what you win like, was this your platform in life that maybe you could share your story of struggling and having uh, a lot of mental downfalls and being angry and how you corrected yourself to, to be your testimony to others? And I never, it, I never really started it to be that. I did, I talked about PMA and I sought out help after my brother died because mentally I knew I was in a bad place and I wanted to fix it. I didn't want to be that guy. So I then started understanding that, hey, we all have these issues where we get in lows and, and we can't get out of them. But I would do seminars and talk about that only because it helped me. Like, I didn't go in there saying, hey, I can change your life. I went in there saying, hey, let me tell you what happened to me. Let me tell you how I had to fix it. And if it helps you, it helps you. And then it just took off to a level where I have had time after time after time again where someone walks up. It only happened three times in Wisconsin at La Crosse, where a grown man will come up and shake my hand and break down and start crying in the weigh-in line, right after I weigh in, and tell me that your, your speech and the way you looked at PMA changed my life. I had a man follow me to the boat ramp and he said, I beat stage four cancer. I beat stage four cancer and I'm wearing your bracelet and I watch the video every day. He said, you son changed my life. And he said, I drove three and a half hours one way to meet me in the parking lot. So I tell him again, when I get in, I was like, was me catching 15 pounds that impressive today? Or was that? Or was that? But Bass has provided me the stage to play my career out on in a way that I never thought possible that I could change somebody's life. I never knew what the power of something was. I always thought that an AOI or another trophy is what I was looking for. To you look a lady in the eyes and she says, I sit in rehab, strung out on heroin, and I watched your video, and I drove here today to tell you that I'm two years sober. What's that worth for me? So my, my career has took a really amazing turn in the last 10 years. And it's all because I think I just got to the point where like, I can stand in front of 300 people and tell you where my downfalls are. You know, I got a temper. I fight it every day. It's easy to get down. And once I realized that being transparent with others, I realized that I'm walking in the same shoes with a lot of men and women around me. And guess what? We all have fishing in common. We all love the sport. But like that's been the game changer for Leanne and I. I know many, many times she's got in the truck and looked at me and she said, you're right, fishing chose you. It is what it is. I'm Gerald Swindle. I fished Bassmasters for over 23 years now.